10 reasons I think that box turtles are the best pet turtle. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. My name is Zoe, but most people know me as ZA Reptiles. And as someone that has worked with many species of turtles professionally over the years, I have a lot to say about turtles. Which you guys probably know from my last several videos where I talked about why you don't want turtles, and also the few turtles that I actually would want to keep. So I would have people come into the nature center where I worked all the time talking about turtles, parents and grandparents saying, you know, our kid, our grandkid wants a turtle, what do you think? And I would always give the same recommendation. If you're gonna get a turtle, don't get an aquatic one. And what I mean by that is get yourself a box turtle. So let's cover the 10 reasons box turtles are literally the best pet turtle to keep. So to start, if you don't know a whole lot about box turtles, they are a terrestrial turtle, which means that you don't have to keep them in a tank full of water. Why did I just say water so weird? You don't need to keep them in a tank full of water, which already makes them so much better than all of the other turtles. You don't have to worry about water quality and the weight of a tank full of water, which is just amazing. Which leads me into my next point, which is you don't have to do water changes. No water changes, sign me up. This can get super complicated if you have a tank in one room and don't easily have access to water. Sometimes it results in you having a bucket water, which is a good workout, but also a pain in the butt. Which is gonna roll us into point number three, which is you can keep them very similar to a lot of the reptiles we're used to keeping. So the box turtle I worked with kept him on organic topsoil and place sand, just like I do with pretty much all of my reptiles. Super easy. Going off of that, because of the way that they live and the habitat you provide them with, you can go bioactive with them. So I went bioactive with the box turtle that I worked with and had a thriving group of isopods. I kid you not, it is the most successful bioactive setup I have ever created. And going along with bioactive, you can provide them with live plants. So it looks so good, so naturalistic. I never really had good luck with live plants in the aquatic turtle tanks, whether they just got uprooted, or the turtles would eat them, or tear them apart. But the live plants in that box turtle tank, I primarily used spider plants, that's what I had the most luck with. They just grew like crazy. He loved hanging out underneath them. So like where the spider plants would like kind of hang over, he would climb right in there and just sit and hang out right under the basking light, but in that spider plant where he felt like he was hidden. And it was just so cool to see. Definitely one of my favorite setups. And kind of on the bioactive topic, talking about keeping them very natural, they are much easier to keep outside than an aquatic turtle. An aquatic turtle, you'd need to make some sort of fancy pond, have good filtration. We have an outdoor pond at the nature center, but don't have access to power where it is. So we have to use a special filter that's hooked up to a solar panel, which just ultimately really didn't work all that great. It was better than nothing, but it did not compare to those outdoor setups that have like canister filters and whatnot. But it takes so much work to be able to create an outdoor pond for aquatic turtles. Where a box turtle, slap the thing on the ground, they walk around in the grass, it's great. You just have to make sure that they're not gonna be able to dig out of that outdoor setup. That is the main issue with box turtles, is they are gonna dig. So you wanna make sure they're not gonna be able to dig out of whatever outdoor enclosure that they have. That can be something as simple as just putting a bottom on the enclosure and then putting the dirt and whatnot back in. That way they can dig, but there's no escaping. But then you can give them the opportunity to have exposure to natural UVB and heat and the real sun, which ultimately is the best thing for reptiles. So they're a very easy animal to be able to get outdoors. Next up is they can live 50 plus years. So you're gonna have this box turtle for many, many years, which isn't a bad thing considering they are pretty easy to care for. And it's nice to be able to, you know, get connected to that pet and know it's not gonna leave you in like 10 to 15 years. Our next two points are, they kind of go together, honestly, but that's to do with their diet. So they have a diet very similar to that of most lizards that we're used to working with. So if you already have experience with lizards like bearded dragons, then a box turtle diet is going to be fairly simple for you because they're going to eat things like plant matter, but also 
insects. And this is where another reason I like them better than aquatic turtles is because you can tong feed them if you want, but because they eat on land, you can put their food into a food dish and let them go to town. So it's not murking up their whole enclosure. You're not having to tongue feed them or hope they find their food if you just drop it in. It's in a food dish, they know where to find it. So then the second half of this, which leads us into number nine, is their diet consists of about 50-50. 50% plant matter, 50% protein. So every feeding, we would do a little salad and then top it with some bugs or something like Missouri turtle gel. We did that once a week, a commercial diet. So very important to always give variety when you're feeding animals, but they are fairly easy to feed. And number 10, they're a lot better to interact with than aquatic turtles. And kind of like I said earlier, I get a lot of questions about my kid, my grandkid, they want turtles. Well, people get aquatic turtles and realize they can't really do anything with them, and that's when they end up rehoming them. Or box turtles, you can take them out, let them walk around on the floor, maybe do some target training with them. A great example of an outgoing box turtle is the box turtle that Garden State Tortoise has. I think his name is Otis, if I remember correctly. But I love every time they post videos of him. He has such a big personality. He is a great example of just how outgoing box turtles can be. And I just think they are a fantastic turtle. So if you are thinking about getting a turtle and you've never worked with turtles before, I think a box turtle is probably going to be a great fit for you over something more aquatic. Now, if you're someone that's very into aquariums, likes fish, maybe an aquatic turtle is a good fit for you. But I find a lot of people have issues with the aquatic part of keeping turtles, which is why I always push people in the direction of a box turtle if I think they're looking for a fun family pet. So what do you guys think? Would you recommend a box turtle as a great type of turtle to keep? Or do you have another turtle in mind that you think would be even better than a box turtle? Let us know in the comments. And if you have anything to add to this video, also add it to the comments. We're all about learning and growing here. And as always, thank you guys for watching and we'll see you for the next video. Bye!